Hello and good morning. Welcome to a very frosty Gloucestershire. It's really chilly out there. Right, let us check. Hello, Alfie. Let us check we're live in the right place before we go any further. Wait for the refresh. Hopefully we will have some joiners this morning to chat with. Yes, yeah, super frosty, got static hair. It's one of those static hair days today with this weather. So, but it's bright, the sky is clear. Uh, get down. So rude, he's so rude and so needy at the minute. Good boy, go and sit on your bed. Good boy. Um, where was I? Yeah, it's very fresh and it's lovely clear sky, bit of sun trying to come through. It's gonna stay quite cool this morning. Quite cool for most of the day. Um, probably not gonna get above three degrees here. It's very frosty out there. And as I've said, it's a typical static hair day for me. And I'm very static. Everything I'm touching here today, um, I'm getting shocks from. So that's usually down to cold weather, isn't it? So, right, let us see if anybody is joining. Don't think anyone's hopping on yet. We're live in the right place, so that's a good place to start. So this morning I'm going to be using the Adorable Owls again and doing something, something for Valentine, but something that you could recycle, reuse the idea for kind of any occasion. Um, but I'm using Valentine greetings on it. So you always have to think whatever whatever I'm sharing with you, you can recreate in different colours, you know, because I don't use a lot of colour. I like very neutral things. Um, so you can always, you don't have to stick with what I've done. Repurpose, that's what I'm here for. Just to, I'm here to sow that seed to get you crafting and then your, your flow will come from there. So I'm like a starting point for some of you. Right, let us put you down onto the desk, make a bit of room and let's put some stamps down. Show you the stamps that I'm going to be using. I did pop a little photo up um, earlier of what I am doing, but someone is popping on. Okay, let's excuse the palm of the hand. Let's get you down on the desk. Move that out a bit further. Phone is moving. Wait for catch up. Let's do a little bit of um. I think my phone's on a bit of an angle in the in my stand, which isn't the best. <clears throat> Wait for catch up. Right, I'm gonna move it. My my phone is on a complete. That's better. It's better for it to be flat, and you will get get the correct view move everything around again okay so adorable owls they are proving so so popular you are loving them i think they are top of the list of of celebration choices i'm pretty sure right let's just move a little bit and then i think we are there and then i'm also using the love for you might have to zoom in a little bit. Let's get the chair out of the way. Hoping comments will show today as well. So Adorable Owls, this is a cling, so it's red rubber. Free celebration item. When you spend £45, you can choose this during January and February. So during our cel celebration promotion. And then I'm using the Love For You. Um, I don't know if I've actually used, maybe I have used some words from this. Um, I still haven't got the dies to go with this. I really need to order it, but my money always gets spent elsewhere on on other stuff that I need. So, but I really do need to get it because there are dies that go with it. Let me show you in the book. So I did put a marker on my page. So it's from the Country Floral lane sweet it's a whole suite of products i'm using some of the papers in here and we've got two stamp sets in here i've got the country bouquet 
and then the love for you that I'm using. And then you've got these dies that have the words that cut out. So I desperately need to get that. Should have originally bought it as a bundle because I would have saved myself some pennies. Hello, Rose. Good evening. How are you doing? Thank you for stopping by. It's lovely to have you join me this morning. Hopefully some others will be coming in. Um, 20 to 10. So it's kind of a dodgy time. People are on school runs and things like that. Right. Let us begin. So I've got two projects for you today that I'm going to create. Um, I've got a card and a gift box, a little package. I think I've got all my stamps out ready. Going to be using, let's get some colours for you. Blushing Bride, which my, my label has faded, so I've put a different language on there. Sweet Sorbet, Soft Sea Foam and Mossy Meadow. So those are my colours today. So there is a bit of colour going on. We've got, I do love Sweet Sorbet, even though it is quite a bright red. I really do love it. Good morning, Zanna. How are you doing? How are you all keeping? Rose, you enjoy watching. Thank you so much. I love having you all here. And it's so nice that I get to chat with you while I craft. And you get to join in as well. So, right, let us start with the card. So, I... There's not a lot going on here, is there? Um, two sheets. Got some DSP as well. gorgeous let's bring in the paper to show you so these are from the country floral country floral lane yes trying to remember all of the the names um i did flash these at you last week i think but they are just so lovely and you mustn't think of them as kind of like valentine papers let me just pull back the the mini catalog so basically you've got the the country bouquet bundle here you've got a punch that goes with it so this one here and this actually coordinates with the papers hello Renee all the way from Australia good evening to you how are you doing thank you for stopping by Zana I'm glad to hear that you are good too so yeah so you've got this kind of set which when you first catch sight of, of some of our stamp sets, you're immediately drawn to something. So you might be drawn to the word Valentine and think, oh, I'm not going to get that set. That's for Valentine's. You really have to look past every, you have to look into every element of a stamp set and see what you can actually do with it. Because it is definitely not just for Valentine's. It's got so much more to offer. So... Think of hearts, you, you think of weddings, think of anniversaries. But that's that punch will actually punch out this sheet here. Um, and the colours in here, it does slightly confuse me because we've got Mossy Meadow, which you can see is the darker kind of green on here. Can you actually see that? Then we've got Sweet Sorbet. We've got Petal Pink, which is this colour. Aren't these two lovely together? I used that last week. But then we've got this random sheet here, which I adore. I love a spot. I love a stripe. I love a small pattern. But this colour here, you've got sweet sorbet, but it's definitely not petal pink. So I have teamed, because I'm going to be using some of this stripe, I've teamed this with Blushing Bride today. So we've also got some balmy blue and some mint macaron. So a really lovely set. I've seen people cutting out these bikes and putting those on their projects as well. So just such a lovely set of papers. Um, and perfect for what I wanted to use them for today. So I wanted to do something very Valentine-y themed, but that being said, you could recreate this just for a thank you, for a birthday, for any kind of occasion. Um, or just because, you know, sometimes it's nice to give a card just because. So what I'm going to do first is take my base piece, which measures five and three quarters by eight and a quarter. Good evening, Kim. How are you doing? 
hope you are able to hear me okay today. I think you were having problems with sound, weren't you? And I don't know if it's a bit of a Facebook thing where it kind of just likes to upset the apple cart when we go live. So I'm just folding that one in half. I'm going to put that to one side with these two pieces for a minute and I'll give you some measurements of those after but first I want to stamp this owl because I want to set it to one side before I colour it in so I'm going to use my stamping blends and the adorable owl set which is the freebie has three really cute owl images in here and a couple of greetings as well which which are, are perfect to go with it um but aren't they just so cute and they're not just like for children definitely they're for like all all ages and i i love i just love how cute they are they're big eyes they are so sweet right so i need to bring in a memento ink i've also got some blends to colour in. I've got crumb cake, light and dark, got grey granite in light and then is that pool party? Yeah, light pool party. So we're going to do a bit of colouring in but first of all I just wanted to get some stamped down and set to one side just to dry out for a minute. So you are all good which is good to know. What have you all been up to? What have you been doing? Some of you are at the end of your day already. Ours is just beginning here. I've got, I've had like a busy, last week was a really busy week of like appointments in and out. And this week is quite busy with classes. So I've got a class this afternoon. I've got to get Alfie to the vets as well, just for uh, like a checkup, just a, like a annual health checkup um i've got classes more classes at the end of the week thursday saturday so <coughs> excuse me super busy lots to do lots of kits to get cutting later on i'm gonna chop one off i know i've stamped four i don't need all four but those are gonna set to dry in my little pot of goodness for a project that i might want to do later right the other thing i want to do is I've chosen some greetings from here now love for you again you're going to look at that and think oh that's a bit lovey-dovey is you know that's just for valentine's but it's not you've got some really great greetings in here okay we've got valentine's day which is obviously very seasonal but we've got anniversary we've got congratulations we've got the word friend and we've got a thanks sentiment as well so i absolutely adore this we've got the two-step flowers that you can stamp to make one image um and we've got a little flower center there and the cutest little heart as well as this one here as well. And these are leaves that are two-step. I'll show you how to do that. I'm not two-stepping with anything today, um, but I will show you. Let's get a fresh sheet of grid paper. I will show you how they go together. Oh, I love a fresh sheet of grid. And the reason I'm pulling this in is because the love for you is photopolymer. So we need that spongy mat to help us get a good image. Right, let's find some scraps. So I'm going to stamp my flower. I've chosen the largest flower. So you can see we've got two different sizes. And these are shown at full size as well. So you can see exactly that the size of the stamp is the size of the image on the front cover, which is super handy. So I want the flower in the sweet sorbet. Oh, that's stiff. And then I'm gonna use the blushing bride just to do the tiny little center, which I do find hard to line in, but Oh, and I think I've re-inked my sweet sorbet as well, so it could be quite juicy, juicy Lucy. So I'm going to stamp a couple. I've got a good bit of colour on there. Stamp a couple of those to be going on with. 
I'm trying not to get red fingers before I start at the very beginning. It's inevitable it will happen. Um, the darker the colour, the more chance you're going to get it everywhere. Um, but let's try and start as we mean to go on. I also want another little scrap. You know I have this little bag of, of scrap pieces right next to me. So as soon as I need something, I've got it to hand. Let's try and find a skinny. That will do. So when I'm cutting, and because I cut behind me on my kitchen island, and I'm not in my kitchen, I'm in my studio, for those of you that don't know, but I've got an Ikea, I can't remember the name of it, but a kitchen island that I use for doing all my die cutting and my kit cutting. Um, and when whatever scrap pieces are left, they come over to this side. So they're constantly at my side. And I think that's an important thing to point out. And for those of you that don't have a designated craft space I do feel your pain but even if you have a tiny little table in the corner of your room just with all of your pieces in one space that will help you to be so much more productive it's really difficult if you've got everything stored away in boxes that are out of your reach because it just makes makes it so much harder for you to be creative so if you've got things around you it I just find it helps you be way more productive and I appreciate not everybody is able to have like their own full on creative space. Um, and believe me, I am very thankful and grateful for what I have. But I started in the corner of a bedroom many years ago, had a, boxes, had a little desk in the corner. I'm just going to take this little one and try and line it in as best I can. Um, yeah, I started with boxes in the corner of a room and then gradually took over the room. You know what it's like. But we all have to start somewhere, don't we? Right, let's do some leaves. So I've got, I have got a new style Mossy Meadow ink, but it's gone a bit broken. There's something wrong with it. It's not stamping properly. The surface is, has gone funny and I keep meaning to replace it. And do I get to it? I forget about it. I put this one away and then totally forget. But this one still works. It's old. I keep re-inking it and it's doing really well. So we have this like double leaf here. So I'm just going to ink, ink one, and then I'm going to stamp another directly next to it. And that just gives us a second generation of colour, which I love. Now, if you are doing... What you can do with this, I have pulled out my soft sea foam, but I don't think I'm actually using it. But you could stamp a second leaf in soft sea foam. But what also you can do, let's stamp another off. So let's do that one like that. So then you have the second step of this image that lines in. Good morning, Lucianne. How are you doing? And then what we can do with this is go straight back in with the mossy meadow and line it in over the top. If I'd done this round the right way. And then you get your two-step leaf with its, it's like shadow. I don't know why my phone rang then. Did anybody hear my phone ring? I think it just froze us didn't it i am on do not disturb so i do not know why my phone is ringing while i am going live i said to you last week i cannot fathom fathom out this new the way the do not disturb works i'm i'm pretty sure that i've got it set so that nobody can bother me but then each time i go live something happens something pops up and i'm like that shouldn't be happening Anyway, it didn't cut us off. I'm still live, so that is good. Lucianne, you're good. That's great to know. I'm fine, thank you, my lovely. I am fine. What are you up to today? Are you working? So we've just got one flower and a couple of leaves. What we might do next is colour. Let's do, before I sit down, let's do a bit more stamping while I'm standing and then I can give my back a rest. So 
what do I need? I've pulled out the Happy Valentine's Day. And with a long stamp like this, you need to be really careful that you've mounted it straight on your block because quite often it can be, you can just pop it on and then it's not actually straight. When you stamp it out, it's a bit crooked. And I haven't got a skinny strip ready. Let's see if we can find one that's the right width. Quite skinny with one that I've used. Might have to cut a slither. It's quite a lot wider, but let me just see if... Oh, I haven't even got a piece over there. Let's just use this. It'll be fun. Let's pull back in my mat. And I thought I would do my greeting in Memento just to... Because I'm using... I've, I've got the outline on black here. So I thought I would do my greeting the same. You're making a card for your mum's birthday. Bless her. When's her birthday, Lucianne? Is it coming up soon? Right, I'm just going to line that piece of cardstock straight on my grid paper before I try and stamp down. And then we've got our little greeting on there. And that is a bit wider than my original. I'm just going to grab a piece white. See if I can cut a much skinnier piece. And this is the, look how skinny that is. If I get that on there, that will be a challenge, won't it? Um, this is the great thing. This is the one thing I love about a photopolymer. When you have greetings, you can just see exactly where you're going. Right, if you start with your piece of paper straight to begin with, it should help you get it on there straight. You need a steady hand. Got a little bit of fluffiness going on there. It's her birthday next Monday, Lucianne. Let's just give that a clean. And have another go. I'm wondering if I need to zoom you in a little bit. I might zoom you in. Can't talk and stamp straight at the same time. It's not much between those. We'll use one of those anyway. And that's it for the stamping. Let's pull out my chair. Might just zoom you in a little smidge if that's possible. I've got the sniffs now as well, which isn't ideal. I know you don't hear me as well when I'm sitting down because I'm a, away from my microphone, but hopefully you can hear me enough. Right, when I'm colouring this owl, and I've, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I've not coloured it in any other colours. This is my favourite colourway. So I like to start with the dark crumb cake and do the top part of the head. Now, Colouring for me at the moment is a little bit of a challenge because my glasses aren't suited to my eyes right now, shall we say. Um, and I did, I have been to the optician last week and I'm going tomorrow to pick up my new glasses. So I'm hoping they're going to make an improvement on, on everything that I'm doing close up because it is a bit of a struggle at the minute. And colouring this, I am quite a distance away from what I'm doing. Um, and that helps. You're waiting for a Stampin' Up! delivery, Lucianne. Oh, bless you. Is that the one, the repeat of the one that, that came that was damaged? You had a uh, leaky ink, didn't you? A leaky ink? That doesn't sound right, but you had an ink refill that had link, leaked everywhere. So I'm just going to start by colouring in the face, the rest of the face area in the light. And I'm not really going to do much shading on this because I don't really feel the need. I do a little bit with depth and colour. Um, let's just colour around the edges. So satisfying colouring with these pens. I'm just going to fill in that bit of the ear with the paler colour. And then do the body. So yeah, I've got to go and pick up my 
glasses tomorrow. I've got two pairs coming. So I've got a spare in case I lose one. My glasses permanently live on my head. If they're not on my head, then I'm always slightly concerned about where they are. Because if I put them down somewhere, so what I'm gonna do now, <coughs> excuse me, is just add a little bit of dark under that wing and then pull it out with the light colour just to sort of add a little bit of shadow under the wing so again just adding a bit of dark and then just like pulling it together which lid goes with which pen um yeah so I've got two pairs on order so I'm hoping that when I'm cutting things out, that I'll be able to see a bit clearly because it's a struggle at the minute cutting out. Right, I'm going to take the light grey granite. I wanted a different colour other than brown to do the beak and then just to do the feet. What else have I got on tomorrow? Oh, I've got, um, I've got the vets today and dog groomers tomorrow afternoon. Honestly, never a dull moment here. Never a dull moment. Right, so that is ready to be cut out. So we'll do a bit of cutting. So as I showed you with this leaf, you can do, let's stand back up. You can do exactly the same as that with the flower. So you've got the solid image and then kind of like the outline, like the shadow. So you can do that with both of those flowers. So something to have a play around with. You're going to drop me a message. Okay, perfect, Lucianne. So right, I'm going to chop out. And I do, I work in a really good light over here. My studio has got really good light. But, and I think it doesn't help when you're cutting trying to cut with like a white background behind you it's really hard to see if your eyes aren't that great what I struggle with the most is as soon as it gets a bit dark I can't really see anything <laughs> which isn't the best so nighttime crafting is not good although I should maybe invest in it's okay when I'm over here because I've got good light um, but when I'm in the house I can't see a thing it's too dark over there at night time so this little bit I kind of just go up and down and in and out I'm never too fussy about all these little feathers that are hanging over the edge don't need to be super intricate let's trim out those wing feathers and we'll cut these out as well while we're here so yeah lighting over here is pretty good I've whacked the heating up as well too although it was it's not really been cold over here but with people coming I don't want anybody else to feel cold so burning our way through those wood pellets but I think after today it's going to warm up a little bit which is good so as long as it stays dry though I don't really I don't like the damp weather I'd rather it was cold and frosty than wet and grey and miserable I mean it's so beautiful to look at isn't it and I don't like the thought of having to travel when the weather is is like this but it's beautiful to look at on Sunday morning we went out for a long walk I say long walk it wasn't that long it was about five five miles just under five miles um, we went over to Haresfield those of you that are local will know went up on the beacon and had a really good trek across the fields through the woods it was lovely, but oh my goodness, it was so cold. My feet were permanently frozen. My circulation is awful. 
Good morning. Oh, a couple more joining. Hello, Lisa. How are you doing? You like the owl? Yeah, isn't, isn't, I'm going to call her this one a she. Isn't she cute? Let's give her a bit of life. Let's curl her wings so that she can, if she wants to, she can just fly off. She is so sweet. And my colouring isn't anything special at all. Let's curl this flower while we're here. And then we can start. We've got a little bit of die cutting to do. We can start building up. Hi, Helen. How are you doing? You're at the hospital. You'll catch up on the replay. Okay, my lovely. I hope you're okay. I'll catch up with you later. Kim, you're going to have 37 degrees on Thursday. Oh my goodness. It's it, you know, it's so hard to imagine when the weather is so chilly here that it could be so warm there. Very strange. Right. Let us start with need to do a little bit of die cutting. So I'm using my trusty something fancy set today and I think I want the largest frame on there and then of course we need a scallop border don't we so I'm going to be running through the edge of the cracker die to get myself a nice scalloped edge let's bring in the plates I'm going to do a bit of embossing as well so what have I pulled out oh the timber going to use the timber to emboss that one we can get that it's a mark on there but we'll use the other side let's chop that off we'll do that one for oh washi tape Tape that one down. We'll have to do these individually. And then I've just got a piece of copy paper. I'm going to pop that over the top. Then my top plate, just to, can you see how grubby that top plate is where the washi tape goes through? Then the adhesive sticks to my plate and then that transfers onto whatever you're cutting. But by having that piece of copy paper there, it helps to keep this nice and clean. Pull that off. So we've got that nice piece there, lovely label, nice frame. Then, oh, I've already cut one. I already cut it, didn't I? So I don't need to run that cracker through, but I do need to put through the embossing folder so we need to use the plate number four for that one do you remember last week I lost my greeting it was over by the cutting machine it had got stuck to something obviously oh Lisa you've got covid oh bless you my lovely I hope it's not hit you too hard it's rotten, isn't it? So much going around. Got a bit of static fluff on there. I hope you're feeling brighter soon. Oh, it's rotten, isn't it? Roll on the spring. So I'm just going to run that through. When all the bugs have disappeared for a bit. Oh, so much static. I did debate which embossing folder to use because you know how much I love that, the cane, cane weave. What's it called? Yeah, cane weave. This one that I just cannot put down. But I love this one. I just think it's so, it's such a universal one. Right, let's start getting some layers down and getting a wriggle on. So my blushing bride layer measures and I think this is quite a random, might have been out of my scrap packet. Three and a half by five and an eighth. And 
have we got an even border all the way around? We do. So it wasn't a random piece. So we've got a nice even border all the way around. So three and a half by five and one eighth. And I'm going to stick that straight down. And, and a good point to make with our embossing folders, they do look different whichever side you use. And I like both sides of this one. Uh-oh. Tombo's gone to sleep. There's going to be a splodgy mess. Can you see how it's dried up in there? It was just got a little bit bunged up for want of a better word. So we'll put plenty on there. Because this is embossed, we want to make sure that it sticks down properly. Because it's kind of like, when you run something through an embossing folder, it's like rippled, isn't it? And it, it kind of wants to come back off of the paper, so. That's not going anywhere. Tombow is such a strong glue. And then next we're gonna put this piece down. It's quite sweet on that side with the balmy blue and mint macaron. We're gonna pop that layer directly down on the top centrally. Just thought, I zoomed you in, are we too close? No. It just means you get a closer look at my awful nails at the moment. I need to get something done with them that's going to help them. Something bugging me on there. <laughs> right, so we've just got those two layers together. And um, this is a colour combination that I think Belle in my team shared with me by doing something and I just fell in love with it, absolutely fell in love with it. Right, we're gonna take our label and add, oh gosh, we're getting to the last legs of this sheet. I'm gonna to have to go and grab a new packet, I think. Let's chop a couple of edgy bits. Put those like that. Oh, my thumbnail went yesterday. And my thumbnail is my, my dimensional back taker offer. Can't do it with my, it's weird how you get used to doing something a certain way. Can't use my index finger. And then we're gonna pop that one down centrally top to bottom but more over to the right side and try and get it straight i'm using the hearts to kind of help me line it up okay see i haven't missed any comments sometimes i miss some of you coming in right oh i need some of that lovely paper a strip under here so i've cut a skinny strip this is about half an inch looks like yep from that lovely dsp and i want a piece that's let's measure what i've done and then it can be just over two and a half inches it kind of wants to just hang over the edge either side of this. So let's just, let's cut it at two and a half because I think what I've got left will work with my next project. Let's just cut it around about there. And that might just be enough for my next project. Let's have a look. It just needs to overhang more one side than the other. Then I'm gonna take my, oh, honestly, how can I stop myself using the cracker die for this? I just love the scallopy border on everything at the moment. So I might go half and half a scallop at each end. Let's see, let's chop it off there. Put it on and trim it down. I'll keep that bit because believe it or not, 
that will get used. Just take off that top bit so it doesn't pop over the top of this paper. Add on some glue. Just lay it down on. And we'll just have to snip off the ends of these two. Just love a scallop border. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to, the top part of my scissors, I'm going to butt up to my paper here like that and then snip. And that should be pretty straight. And again, I take my scissors, butt it up and just snip off the end. Oh, I feel super sniffy today. I'm trying not to. And then we're just going to pop this straight down on onto that white layer. Has my grid paper moved? It's on a bit of a crook now. Let's pop it down there, near the bottom, like that. Wait for it to stick. And then we're gonna go back to our greeting. So how long have you been unwell, Lisa? Were you poorly over the weekend? I'm gonna, oh, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I might have been out of shot, so I'm just gonna snip Happy and Valentine's Day off. Like that. And we're gonna pull in. I want these bits here because they're quite straight. Honestly, the edge bits are as valuable as the actual dimension, dimensionals themselves. So we're going to pop a long piece on the back of each of those. See, having no nails does hamper you slightly. That's when you need to buy that embossing kit with the tweezers in. Um, I might have to go over a little bit with that. Like that. And we'll pop the happy in in a minute. I just want to get the owl in place. And we'll add more dimensionals behind the owl because we can. Might cost £20 to post the card, but it will be worth it. I did post something the other day. Um, I posted something to somebody in my team and it was borderline going through the slot and had to pay the extra, but it was worth it. Oh, look what happened then. It just flew. It flew away and landed in the sweet sorbet ink. Now, do I put it down and try and fathom out what I'm going to do with it? We're going to have to. What I will do is chop off that very... It always happens, doesn't it? They're not accidents. They're happy accidents. Maybe I'm going to have to think rejig about where my card is going. I need to hide it. I think we'll just have to add another flower, maybe. <laughs> See, look, it happens to us all. Not going to have stress about it. It's a bit of ink. So we're going to add one flower in here. And then we could be adding another flower. Which way round do I want this one? Let's pop a dimensional behind there. Wouldn't be alive without something going wrong, would it? Uh, you tested positive on Saturday and it's a year since you caught it the last time and you're not feeling good. Oh, my lovely, that's rotten. Absolutely rotten. Jason was so poorly a couple of weeks ago. I was convinced that he would have had COVID, but he, we were testing and he was fine. So it's hard to know isn't it so I had it a year ago 
November. And I'm only just really getting my smell back. Right, so I'm going to pop these two leaves on as well. Where have my dimensionals gone? When you've got lots of grandchildren who wear nappies, having no smell is not a bad thing. <laughs> Although you never can tell when something has occurred. But no, my, my smell has been like the last thing to come back. And we did get really out of breath. We were out of breath, you know, just like walking for a long time. Right, can we pop in a little flower there? Let's have a look. Oh, I've got it mounted up. It might look too much, but let's have a go. See what it looks like. I don't know if... We could just put in a bit of foliage. Let's do a, fl a flower and see what happens. Find a small bit of paper. Yeah, the walk we did on Sunday, there were a couple of biggish hills. Um, and I did get quite out of breath on a couple, which I don't like. That is not me at all. Just while this is inked, I'm going to fill that piece of paper just because I can. And then we'll pop that little centerpiece. Yeah, I got really out of breath, which never used to get out of breath. And I'm a marcher. And when I see a hill, I'm that person that wants to run up it. <laughs> I may not make it to the top, but I just have that thing in me that's like, this hill was meant for running up. <laughs> Madness. But yeah, I have definitely, my fitness has decreased, shall we say. But need to improve on that. I mean, I'm not a sit still person for long, but exerting yourself is a different story, isn't it? Right, let's just see what this looks like. I'm sure there is a die that cuts these flowers out. Let's have a look. I haven't even registered that. Yes, there is. So these are the dies. So you've got the dies that cut the flowers, the heart, some words, and the leaves as well. I need that set. But I'm coping, I'm coping cutting them out at the minute. Right, can we somehow... Let's try and pull this up. Gently. And I think I'm just going to wedge that flower down in. Snorri Joe under my table here. It's right for some, isn't it? I think we'll pop that like that. And then discreetly wedge. I want his feet popping out there. There we go. You would never know that I, I, it flew away and landed in the sorbet ink. And I left it at that. Just a bit of flower, a bit of floralness going on. Let's look at my original. Looks much crisper. Not really 100% sure about that flower there when you compare them both. Um, maybe let's tilt you up a little bit. There'll be nothing left on this dimension. It's not going to stick in a minute. So, yeah, I just thought it could make a Valentine's card. It could make a hello card. It could make a birthday card. It doesn't have to be Valentine, but I've just put it on there because that season is coming, that um, event. So it won't be long and we'll be thinking about, well, we need to be thinking about our treats now. Um, I said to you last time I spoke to you, I've got so many things chocolate treats in front of me that I need to do stuff with so so first card done 
Thank you, Kim. It's just that owl. She's just cuteness overload, isn't she? Super cute. Right. Next, I've got a box. And got some bits and pieces in here. I'm going to see whether I can use the leftover pieces from that one. So I'm doing a crumb cake base. I've got, that's all scrappy bits. <clears throat> and then I've got two layers, one of Sweet Sorbet and one of Blushing Bride. So let's get my scoreboard. And do a bit of scoring. And this is where I always pray that I've written my measurements down correctly. So thank you guys. You're liking, you're liking it. That's good to know. So I've got a piece of crumb cake. It's almost half a sheet of A4. Let's bring that down a bit. Can you see now? Um, so it measures five and three quarters by eight and a quarter, which is the same size as my card base. Okay. And we're going to pop it in landscape. And I'm going to score at one and three eighths, three and five eighths, five inches, and seven and a quarter. And then I'm going to turn it portrait and score at one and a quarter. And hope and pray that that is correct. Then on this box, and I've done a different variation of this box, which I think I've got out to show you. Um, but do you remember me saying last week with, I made this box with you last week? I did this one. Okay, so this like pouchy box. The different ways of, and I will come back to that one with a different way of adding a closure on it. So this box that I'm doing, you can do different ways of adding a lid and I'll show, I will show you a variation on it. So I've got another piece of crumb cake and this measures, now these aren't very technical terms for measurements, but when you're making a lid to fix a box onto a box, it needs to be slightly bigger. And my technical term for that slightly bigger is a smidge, okay? That smidge measurement is kind of less than a sixteenth. So this measures four and a quarter and a smidge, because it's a tiny bit bigger, by three and three eighths and a smidge. Okay. So basically put it in your cutter, line it at four and a quarter, and then just move it over a little bit. So you get just like one or two mil. That's all you want. And then all we're going to do on this is score it at one inch on each edge. And again, hope and pray that it's the right size. Well, if it's not, it's not, is it? But you'll just have to wait until I refigure the measurements. So what we're going to do on this, on the base piece, we've got a narrower panel over here on the right. So we've got, it's hard to show you, so you've got two large panels, two other panels on the left here that are the same size, and then this panel on the end is narrower. We're going to snip out the whole corner piece of that. And then we're gonna snip up to that first, this is so hard to see, that first score line on all of those and when I fold it you'll be able to see so you know me when I'm on a mission of designing something I wipe, I'd like to be able to get two from a sheet of A4 cardstock if I can obviously it means it's only a small treat bag or box but sometimes that's all it needs to be it doesn't need to be a huge great package so can you see there we've got the the tabs at the bottom, that's the tab on the right hand side as well. And then on the lid, 
we're going to snip a job to see snip snip up and take out a little wedge like that on each edge it's really difficult for me to see the score lines the reflection of my light shining down right and then we'll just give that a little crease on all edges Yeah, so I'll walk on Saturday. Lisa, you'll know where Hairsfield Beacon is. Oh, it was beautiful up there. And it was it was um, a little bit misty still on Sunday, but we took a flask. I made some, let's start, shall I glue this? Yeah, let me glue this and I'll show you how it goes together. So I'm just gonna add adhesive on each of the tabs. Yeah, I made some power balls because when I have a coffee, I like to have something with my coffee. And my favourite choice would be digestive biscuits. That's usually what I go for. I am, I do eat quite healthy. But when I have a cup of coffee, I like something with it. And then just adding, I'm hoping this lid's going to fit. Hoping and praying. Right, this is where it gets a bit tricky because we've got to keep that one in inside. And depending on where you cut on your score line is going to determine how well your lid fits. I always get really nervous doing live things like this when things really need to fit properly. And then we're just going to add some Tombow on that one and stick that one together. Yeah, so I made some power balls and Jason had one. Jason's on cut down. He's, do you know what? He's lost a stone in like three weeks. And that's just cutting down on his meal sizes and then going back from having toast for his breakfast to having porridge made with water. Can you imagine porridge made with water? I mean... Not fun. And it, I don't think he has any sugar or anything. Like that. He might have actually a bit of that plant-based sugar on it. But doesn't sound pleasant, does it? I'd rather eat less and have milk in it than put make it with water. But anyway, he tried one of my Power Balls and he was super impressed and said, there must be something in there that's very bad for you because they taste so good. Um... But they're kind of healthy. They're, they're like high in fat because I use my Thermomix to create them. And it's just nuts. So it's just nuts blitzed down with about four or five dates and a little bit of cocoa powder. So they're not too bad, but super tasty and super rich as well. So Kim, you're not a, a porridge fan. I love porridge. I love it made with almond milk but I don't think I could eat it with water. I like it with almond milk, chopped nuts, maple syrup, not too much, of course, but yeah, that's my favourite. Good morning, Ellie. You've been out for a run. Oh my gosh, are your toes frozen? You need to warm the cabin up so you can get crafting. Excuse me, my nose is running. Yeah, get that cabin warmed up and get in there and... To be, to be fair, when you're crafting, you, you forget about everything, don't you? So that should warm you up. You, you forget that you even got cold. Right, what do we need to do now? I'm not going to build this layer, this box up, but basically it just goes together like this. Okay, so you need to line up those pieces. This is shorter, that tab. So you need to make sure that they're lined up and you can do it flat. So you can pop that down like that, pop your glue on and then close it and then it, it will fit. But I'm not going to do that until I've put my front panels on, just to make it easier. So I've got two layers of card. Soft, Sweet Sorbet is two inches by 
four and a quarter, which is a slightly annoying measurement because you know I like to use my four and an eighth. And then this one is just an eighth smaller, the Blushing Bride, at one and seven eighths by four and one eighth. And what I'm going to do is run that one through with the embossing folder just so it adds a nice background to it. So I'm going to line that up with the bottom of there. Do you wrap up when you run, Ellie? We passed somebody when we were walking on Sunday morning and it was freezing. My feet did not defrost the whole of the duration of the walk. I just did not defrost at all. That's my circulation for you. But um, there was we passed someone running and all she had on was a T-shirt, short sleeve T-shirt. I'm sure that I know you get hot when you run. I did used to run. But I'm sure that your body needs more of a covering. She looked like she was struggling as well. We all commented as she ran by. It was like, oh, she didn't look very well. She was struggling. Right. Just mounted those two together. Now let's check which is going to be. So this is going to be the front of my box. So I'm going to pop that on and I want to use dimensionals. Let's use up these pieces. To layer it up. Satisfaction of using all the edgy pieces. Oops, that one flew. Do I need... Now I feel like I need a bit there and there, <laughs> just to balance it. Oh my goodness. How many dimensionals can you fit on the back of a, a layer? What are we doing for time? We're okay. Where did I get to? Was it a good run, Ellie? You wear gloves and a hat, you've got a body warmer on and once you've gone a couple of miles and your hand's too hot so you have to take your gloves off. You've earned a hot chocolate, yay, definitely. You enjoy it. Right, so we're going to pop that layer on. Do I need to cut anything else? I've got some bits done already, so I've already done an owl. Hey, little man, what are you up to? Wandering around. I've almost got a flower. I've got a leaf ready. Let's just add, I know I haven't got my map, but it's not going to hurt for this little bit. A centre to our flower. And just chop that out really quickly. I do like, um, I don't mind being out in the cold as long as I'm wrapped up. And I wish I'd remembered that lovely Helen got me some hand warmers in my Christmas gift box. And it wasn't until we were on the walk I was like, I should have brought my hand warmers with me. My fingers weren't too bad. It's just my toes. I really suffer. Circulation is so bad that it just struggles. Right, I need to cut another, another label. I want a smaller one. Let's find... I've got a piece of paper that is big enough. Oh, I've got the bit lacking earlier, haven't I? We'll cut one of those out. Just do that quickly. Come eat your breakfast yet, little man. Have you? Haven't eaten your breakfast yet? Stuck to my bit of copy paper.
So we've got the slightly smaller one. Now I need to, I'm going to think about something before I stick the rest of these pieces on. I'm going to assemble my, no I won't. No I won't, change your plan. Stick to the original plan Kerry. Let's do the lid. Changing my mind. I've just got a little bit, I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of an overhang. So I'm just going to like take my scissors kind of snip that off so it's a bit straighter i've got a strip of sweet sorbet and i want to wrap this around my lid so i'm just going to hold it and kind of squeeze it to start with so that i know roughly because you can't score this piece. It's like a no measurement. It would be too hard. So by doing this, we get a rough idea. Can you see how it's kind of showing me where I want to do some creases? And then we'll just crease to reinforce those lines. And just so they don't, because um, they, they crease, as you can see, they give you like a nasty crease line. Whereas if you use the bone folder, you just get a nice crisp corner edge. So this is the easiest way I find, you know, trying to measure around here where you think there would be a score line. It's just not going to work very well. So you can see now, hopefully, that that fits a bit better. Right, we're going to chop off some of that. Let's try and get that a little straighter. Add a bit of glue to get us going and then pop it in the middle, top to bottom. And then I'm just going to wrap it around. And join it. So a bit of Tombow under that end. And then join them. Give it a squeeze. Make sure they line up before you press too firmly. So we've just got a nice like border running around our lid. And then this was the leftover piece I had. I'm wondering if it's going to be long enough because it wasn't calculated to fit. Right, let's follow the line. Start where we did the join on the back. That is the only thing you're going to get a join, but I'll just put that on the back. I mean, we don't even know if this lid's going to fit yet, do we? <laughs> Let us hope and pray. Right, I'm just going to stick this straight on to start with and wrap it around. I don't need to score this because it's thinner, because it's DSP, it will bend around nicely. Right, so we'll just fold it round, give it a nice firm pinch on the corners, pull it quite tightly, fold it around, and then we'll snip it. Of a bit of a longer overlap. And I always put glue on that bit. And then try and join it up. As best we can. Okay, so we just end up with a nice like band around the top of the box, just to take the plainness away. You haven't even seen how it's gonna go on yet, but. So what am I left with? That piece, which isn't quite enough. So I will have to cut into this strip. And what I want is a piece that's just slightly wider. Maybe this will do it the same size as 
the, the box width itself. So just trim that off. Take the little border and cut that to size. Let's trim off that top bit. So I've got a lot of, I've put on some extra classes from February and I haven't, let's just clean the end of my glue. If your glue starts looking like that just give it a clean because it will come out it will make a better exit shall we say um yeah i've put, got extra events going on if you're on my mailing list you should have had information about some of those but we had such a busy weekend um Jason didn't work on Saturday morning, which is very unusual. And it kind of put me out of out of sorts because I usually work on a Saturday morning. And I make good use of that time. And because he was here, I didn't really work. I came over here for about 45 minutes. Didn't get done what I wanted to get done. So I feel like I'm a little bit behind on things. Um, but then we went over to Worcester to have coffee and a little browse. Just a little wander to get out. Um, went to Waitrose as well. So ended up buying a new microwave that we didn't really need. But you know what it's like. Um, and then we came back. We cooked dinner. Let's mount this up. Cooked dinner. Sunday morning we went out for the WALK. And came back. And then we were invited out to lunch at... Well, that wasn't lunch, it was dinner. At Jack and Cole's, we had a delicious roast dinner. Absolutely spoiled. And we got home, I don't know, about seven-ish, half seven. Kind of flaked out on the sofa because we'd eaten so much food. And that was the weekend gone. I didn't really get any housework done, didn't get any ironing done, because that's usually what... I have to catch up at the weekends because I'm so busy in the week. I didn't really get a lot done. Right now, this is where I think I'm going to build my box, which I wouldn't normally, but... Actually, I won't. I'm just going to put this a bit lower to what I did on my original. And all will be revealed when, when you see why I'm questioning what I'm doing. Right, so it's gonna, I'm going to pop this little label down at the bottom. Um, pop my little scallopy banner like I did on my card down at the bottom as well make sure that's stuck uh, where are my greetings I can make use of this one We'll use that skinnier one, I think. And do exactly the same. Chop off the word happy. Pop some dimensionals behind. So yeah, Worcester's really nice. So anybody's local. It's lovely for shopping. Got a lot of shops, although it was so so cold it was so so cold to be wandering out didn't want to be out in it too long in the fresh air but they've got this brilliant cafe over there i think it's just called papas can't remember um but every time we've been there each time we've gone it has been absolutely chock-a-block this this restaurant cafe um you have to like wait for a seat uh, but it's just it's obviously a really popular I'm gonna move that over a little bit a popular location because it's just so busy right we'll leave that one there 
but we shared we shared a, a toasted panini and we had a really small treat between us. I think it was like a peanut butter and caramel cake, but it was tiny. It was the smallest piece of cake I've ever seen in a cafe before, but it was enough for the two of us. It was very rich and very delicious. I feel that's what my weekends consist of, like going out and having coffee and cake. <laughs> One of life's little pleasures. I'm gonna pop the happy up there. Oh, straight would be good. Put the flower in as well. So yeah, the weekend kind of like came and went. I am looking forward to a bit of warmer weather so that I can get out in the garden. I need to, oh, it's just, it's just so, this time of the year, I know it's not just us, everybody's gardens look a bit drab, don't they? But can you believe we've had a daffodil that's actually flowered? It, I mean, it's not standing, the frost has got it now, which is really sad, but the the bulbs are coming through so early. It's rather strange. Helen, you took a leaf out of my book and went out for coffee on Saturday. We tried out the art of coffee in Colford. Oh, I've not heard of that. And you totally recommend it if anyone's in the area. Oh, and it's dog friendly result. So if we were doing a WALK over your way, we can stop in with with the little four-legged friends and have a drink to refuel. Sounds like a good idea. Right, so I've just layered these pieces up pretty much like what I've done on my card. And now I'm gonna put the box together. So we're just gonna pop Tombow on this end smaller tab. And just bring these two together and they just meet lovely don't really want to be pressing too hard behind there so if we go that way that'd be better okay so we've got our little box so we need to put the bottom pieces in first and on this one it just reaches together there then the back is going in I just feel a bit khaki handed when I'm trying to show things like this. And then the front layer will go last. And then we've got a nice, neat fold over the front. So we'll just press that down with our bone folder. And then we've got our little box and the moment of truth the lid fits and it's quite snug on there so the reason I was stalling was because on my original I made the box first until I decided exactly how I was doing the lid and I'll show you it I don't know if it just looks a bit high I mean it's a little bit loose to my lid it's not like falling off completely but um, just think what you could get in there. How many hippos could you get in there? A couple of hippos. Uh, what other chocolate treats would fit in there? All sorts of things. Doesn't have to be chocolate. Just think, in, and like I've said, doesn't have to be Valentine's Day. So, hi Claire, how you doing? Just catching the live. You just got back in. So, um, yeah. Cuteness overload, so quite a good size to pop something in there. I was trying to think, like, could I make this lid where it slid behind that layer? And then I was like, why do I want to do that? What would I gain from that? So, yeah, quite a nice gift. You could design it so you've got ribbon on there. If you wanted to keep that more secure, I am going to do up these inks before I drop something else in it. <laughs> so how cute, super Valentine-y colors, aren't they? Bit of red, bit of pink, perfect. 
So let me find another box. So I've done a few of these boxes. I did this one with my team. So same box base, but we've got a different way of it opening, okay? So it sits like that on the top. Excuse that score line, it's not supposed to be there. Um, but And then you can just pop a treat inside here. A hand cream fits in here perfectly. I did one at Christmas as well. So hand cream, I mean, obviously the Neil Jard one fits perfectly, but what a nice gift that would be. But what I put in, and I've taken it out to eat it, <laughs> um, I wrapped a hippo bar in some tissue and popped that inside there. So lots, I know you guys are good at your ideas of what you can do. I did one for a Christmas class ages ago as well. So again, the ribbon is just like tied around that top piece. So that's just a different mechanism of what you could do once you've got the base of this. So I'd love to see what you guys do with this. I'm giving you measurements for a free box to create in your own way. So I'm hoping that it's helpful. Kim, lipstick. Yeah, it could wrap up a lipstick and pop it in there. Um, obviously, some lipsticks come in like bougie boxes as well, don't they? So that would go in. That would be lovely. A lip balm and a dinky hand cream. Yeah, perfect. I've got a hippo bar here. Looking around. Nail varnish. Nail varnish would go in. A little hippo might get a bit lost in there. Could get two in there. If you sit them side by side. You know I love me a hippo bar. So, food for thought. Food for thought. I'm looking in my little box of goodness in front of me with all these treats in. I wonder if... I don't think one of these would go in. bit wide a bit wide but yeah lots of different things that will fit in there so before I go because I'm needing the coffee and I've got kits to cut and all sorts to do did you recreate them you made them as play settings and you stuffed them with Ferrero Rocher oh perfect sounds divine Helen well I'm glad that you utilize the idea because that's what it's all about so something else, while I was playing with this, these stamps and this set, um, I'm just gonna grab the kit, because I've, I've still got some of it mounted up on stamps, on blocks. But um, this is one of our later kits. We do have another new kit that has come out since, but the Love Treats, I've shown you this, the Love Treats kit, which is just beautiful. It creates these lovely little boxes. You've got pieces in here. Um, this would work nicely actually with the rest of this paper because you've got, um, that does look very mint macaron, but you've got the petal pink as well. So it would work lovely with the country, country floral lane paper and then you get all these boxes lovely little boxes you get ink you get a lovely block in there as well you get all these pieces such a lovely kit but I added on so I did use some of the stamps oh you get the stamp set as well let us show you that so you've got be my valentine which I've used on there get a solid heart and an outline heart you get the word love hugs and kisses you get this lovely um like corner floral stamp there you get the two circles i've got one mounted up here the two lovely circles you've got love is sweet enjoy a treat and then thank you for celebrating with us so really useful sets obviously the valentine one you're going to use right at this moment but 
it's always it's a good good one to have so and i've just used the give it a whirl dies to create that circle underneath stamp the little heart how cute such a lovely kit 20 pounds that kit um you really should look at it the other kits i've got a little flyer the same thanks kit well i say i've got a flyer it half printed and then it stopped and i thought i'm not going to waste more ink so but look at the colors in that beautiful really lovely set there's no stamping in that kit so it's a much cheaper one so there we go hope you've enjoyed another little look into the adorable owl remember it's free when you place a 45 pounds order it's so cute how could you not resist um if you've got any questions about anything please do get in touch with me i will get this uploaded to youtube so if you're stopping by on youtube thank you for stopping by please do leave a comment you know i love to read your comments and i do try and reply to them so the little boxes yet yeah, they are very clever never seen boxes where the middle slides out like that do you mean my box helen or the, the little treat boxes they don't slide out do they but they've got um the way they work Oh, they're cute, aren't they? Look. So that triangle of, of flowers is designed to go in there. And they just kind of open up like that. I did fit in those lovely biscuits we bought from Vienna. One of those fits in there. So, cuteness. Cuteness overload. Quite a nice little size. So, there we go. Oh, my box. Yeah, the sliding. Yeah, just, just something different. I think, you know me, when I find a design like this, I've done this with different inserts in as well. And, you know, I'm sure I've done it with a different lid, but that you'll probably see that coming. So you'll be getting more for your money and learning to create more things with, with what you've already got. So, right, I am going to dash because I need to grab a coffee. I've got some kits to cut. I've got class at one o'clock. Sophie's coming at some point. And, and then I've got to get to the vets. So, yes, thank you so, so much for joining me. Absolutely adorable, just as they say. I'll be back with you all very, very soon. If you've got any questions, please get in touch. Um, don't forget if you are not a demonstrator already that now is the best time to join you get extra free goodies in your kit so do look out for that have a look on my website or just drop me drop me an email ask me a question there's no pressure to do what I'm doing um, you can simply join my team and enjoy the discounts on the products so right I'm gonna love you and leave you bye for now